with praise. We get into his gates with thanksgiving. Praise God. And we want to thank the Lord. Praise God for overseer. Amen. 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 to look at a couple things with the basic theme that the unity of the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, amen, the unity of the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, that as he prayed in John 17, that we would have to the Father, he says, how let them be as united and as one as we have been before the foundation of the world. And God is holding all things together. And the word over in Colossians 1 says, all things are made by him, for him, and him do all things consist. And he holds all things together. Amen, the Father. So we want to look at the Father, how the Father deals with us, amen, because of his son's completed redemption. Yeah. I said completed, say neighbor. Neighbor. Amen. Completed redemptive. Completed redemptive work. And we're going to look at a couple of scriptures here. Our main scripture is going to be from Luke 15. But we, I want you to look at, uh, we're going to go through these scriptures. The first one we're going to start with is 3 of Exodus, how the Father keeps things going so that our energy, our flame, and our fire, and our destiny is never extinguished. Never extinguished. We're going to also look at um, Romans 8, 14 through 16, and we're going to look at first, the first chapter of Philippians, verse 6, verse 6. And I don't know whether you know or not, God makes no mistakes. None. Amen. And I forgot, we're also going to look at Jeremiah um, chapter 1. Chapter 1. So write these down in case I forget them. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Which I won't praise God. So let's look at Exodus 3 1. Exodus 3 1. In Exodus 3, 1, now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to a forest. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Um, as I said before, we don't worship angels, but we better be careful to acknowledge their work. Yes their work, their presentation. Now, this angel does not, the Bible does not give this angel's name. But there's three angels that the Bible does talk about. Amen? Three angels that the Bible does talk about. But when we see usually a divine encounter, usually an angel is involved in it. <clears throat> Usually an angel's involved in it. 
So that's like I said, we don't worship angels, but we thank God that they are heirs unto the children of salvation. And as I told you a little while ago, I thank God that I'm saved. Amen. How many people here are really saved? Amen. Okay. So we know that the angels work and operate in strength as they hear the word and the commands of the Lord. So this was a calling and an encounter that Moses had for destiny. Say destiny. 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 Where you are going, where you're destined to be. And what I want you to see this morning is that God knows every path, every pothole, every detour, okay, every stop, amen, every picnic, every falling away, amen, every perversion that you will encounter in your destiny. Because if you're truly going to get to your destiny, you're going to encounter some things. Mm -hmm. But God. Amen. is able to do exceedingly yes. and abundantly yes. over that which we ask or think. Yes. Amen. And Amen. also the things that we're not thinking of. All right. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. The secret faults. Yes. Yeah. The secret sins. Yes. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. He, is, he is still able to say, neighbor, he's able. Yes. He's, able. he's able. He's able. Now, the fire was burning the bush, but the bush was not consumed. <laughs> And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sign why the bush is not burned. Okay? Yes, sir. Now he said, I am going to see, I turn aside and see the great sight why the bush is not burned. Why the bush is not burned. Why it didn't kill you. Why it didn't lock you up? Why it didn't put you on your deathbed? Why it didn't drive you crazy? Right, Come man. on, somebody. Right, Amen. Man. Yes. Hello, somebody. Hello. Amen. Hello. So I'm going to turn hey. around hey. and see why oh, this thing geez. is not burned up. Because yeah. I know, I don't know about you, but there's some situations yes, where God. it should have been burned up. Yes. 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 Hello, but it was not consumed. Yes. Amen. Amen. He said, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to see. I'm going to look at the sight of this. Now, I want you to go over to um, Romans 8. No, Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Let's look at Jeremiah 1. Jeremiah 1. Let's look at Jeremiah 1. This Jeremiah does not take hats that doesn't belong to him. <laughs> oh, well. well. <laughs> he has a son, Jeremiah, that took one of my hats. I took one of my hats. He likes hats. He likes hats. Okay, let's look at Jeremiah. And I want you to see the relationship that God has had with us before the foundation yes. of the world. Yes. The fact that we are here today is not because of the things that we see, amen, but the things that are not That's seen. seen. All right. yeah. amen. amen. And before, before you got here and before the foundation of the world, there was, relate, there, there was a relationship. Hello, somebody? Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, that relationship was tarnished and perverted through sin, but there was a relationship to launch you into destiny. Mm -hmm. Amen? Okay. Destiny. And how many people have made investments and it didn't work out right? Amen. Mm -hmm. How many people have trust folks and it didn't work out right? Mm -hmm. Okay? Oh, yeah. And we try to always make better investments. Mm -hmm. Now, if we were more intelligent and had more knowledge of that which we invested in, right, or how to make the, the best investment, we would not make bad investments, right? Mm -hmm. That means we would have greater knowledge, we would 
look at the charts, look at the past performance, look at what the company's invested in and what the uh, board consisted of and who's on these things and a lot of stuff to know, right? Mm -hmm. So we can make good investments. Mm -hmm. So God says, when I have invested in you, I made a good investment. I made a good investment. So Jesus said, I've lost none. Um, except for the son of perdition. Yes. I've lost none. Yes. Amen. So he hasn't lost his investment. Amen. 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 Now, let's go back and try to think that even before the foundation of the world, Jesus Christ was slain for us. Yes. yes. Before the foundation yes. of the world. Yes. Amen. Yes. And I believe once we're able to see beyond our small neighborhood, our small family or small and begin to see big. Mm -hmm. I love somebody mm -hmm. and know that even in this affliction, affliction this light affliction, affliction mm -hmm. amen, is only for a moment, but it worketh a greater weight of glory and that glory is attached to destiny which existed and was planned before the foundation of the world. And before the foundation of the world, that's when God inscribe our names in the book of life. Listen to me. Amen. So he can say that I've given you things pertaining unto life and godliness through the knowledge of my son. And see, in the lack of knowledge, we become very limited because we're trying to think with the carnal mind. And if you think carnally minded, it is unto death, which means deprivation. But if you think spiritually minded, it's unto life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Prosperity. Amen. It's about the joy of the Lord when you speak, think spiritually minded. Amen. Now, in Jeremiah, God is talking to the prophet and he's releasing some knowledge so he can understand his prophetic calling. Now, everybody has a call. Everybody has a call. But you're not always able to hear the call or understand the call due to distractions and lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And basically the lack of knowledge of this book. Of this book. Mm -hmm. Because this book is the gospel, yeah. which is the good news. Mm -hmm. Amen. Which is the good news. Now, it's good news in the midst of bad news. All right. And the Spirit of God says you still have power in your pain. You can still have power in your disappointment yes. because I am that I am. Yes. And when Moses said, who should I go and talk to Pharaoh about letting my people go? He said, like, well, I just can't jump up in the Pharaoh's face like that. Okay. He said, tell him I am that I am. And the Spirit of God says, you can jump in Satan's face. Yes. If you submit yourself unto me, you can mm -hmm. resist him and he will flee according to the scriptures. Yes. And he'll come back, yeah. but at least he will flee. Yes. So God is speaking to Jeremiah the prophet, and he said, The words of Jeremiah, the son of uh, Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anahoth and the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign. Now, this is very, very specific time. Very, very specific time. And God speaks to you at a specific time in reference to eternity, not time. But he captures you in time, but he speaks to you in eternity. Mm -hmm. I love somebody. Yeah, I love Amen. And it came in the days of, Jer of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the 11th year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem, captive in the fifth month. How, how what? How precise. Mm -hmm. And that's how God is. He's speaking at a very precise time. And he says, turn off the television, turn off the radio, turn off your mind. Hello, somebody. Hello. Have it stayed on me yes. that you're able to hear yes. what thus saith the Lord. Let he who have an ear hear what thus saith the mm -hmm. Lord. 
Now we know what this person says and what that person says, but you know, people say, well, that's the way it is. No, that's not true. It's what God says. It's what God says. Yes, it is. Amen? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Then the word came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Mm -hmm. So before that <clears throat> seed of sperm okay, came and fertilized the egg, amen, there was a time that you did exist before that. Yes. Mm -hmm. In the, in the mind the of God. Mm -hmm. In the mind of God. Mm -hmm. Absence from the body. Present. present with God. So we were present with the Lord. Yes. Amen? Yes. I, I'm sorry. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto nations. So I knew you before, and while you were in your womb, I anointed you. Uh -huh. Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. And I proclaimed yes. your destiny. Yes. Mm. Come on, somebody. Yes. Thank you. Amen. Yes. Now you are anointed. Now there is a process. We don't understand that many of us are anointed. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hello? And we want to go from anointing to appointing. Mm -hmm. But there is a process yes. Yes. called anointed. Amen. Approved uh -huh. and then uh -huh. appointed. Uh -huh. So there's a time. We're going to see that you have an anointing. Uh -huh. Amen. But you must go through the approval uh -huh. process before you can have the appointment. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And as I tell everybody, when I got into medical school and I was looking at all this and all that, I said, I don't think I want to really finish medical school. I just want to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, and I would have been a wreck <laughs> to somebody's life had I not finished my training. Yeah. And God says this that we're getting ahead of the training. I love somebody, and we're wrecking children, we're wrecking marriages, we're wrecking churches, we're wrecking lives because we don't want to go to through the approval process. Mm -hmm. We don't want to go through the training. All right. You can only handle what you have been trained to do. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody? Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right. I am a licensed physician, which means I could just take somebody in my office and do brain surgery. Mm -hmm. I have a license to do that, but I am not a trained surgeon for the brain. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm not wow. Amen. Okay, I Amen. could open somebody's chest mm -hmm. and do heart surgery. Mm -hmm. Okay, and say it came out right. Mm -hmm. They could not. The law could not say anything against me because I am a licensed physician and surgeon. Mm -hmm. I'll show you my license. It says licensed physician yeah. and surgeon, uh -huh. but I'm not trained as a cardiothoracic surgeon. Right. Right. Okay, so right. I'm going to fumble and bumble. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we need some training. Okay, appointed, amen, approved, and anointed, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, David was appointed king at about, what, 14, 16 mm -hmm. years old? Mm -hmm. But it took him another 15, 16 years to become approved. Mm -hmm. And he had to go through something mm -hmm. to be approved. Mm -hmm. yes. But all the time he was going through something, he acknowledged God's anointed, mm -hmm. and he would not touch Saul. Right. I love somebody. Right. He would not, because he said, that's God's anointing. Right. Amen? So we have to understand there is an anointing. Yeah. There is an approval process, and then there is an appointment. Now remember, before the foundation of the world, you were sanctified. You were called. Amen? And the Lord knew you. But there is still a place. He is not going to release you, okay, with the appointment, but he will release you with the anointing. Uh -huh. Now, the anointing is the manifold presence of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus says in Luke 4, I am anointed mm -hmm. to preach the gospel to the poor, Amen. to heal the brokenhearted, yes. to preach deliverance to the captives, mm -hmm. to recover sight to the blind, and set at liberty to them that are bruised, and preached the acceptable year of the Lord. And he was quoting from Isaiah 61, but he said, I am anointed. But let me tell you something. 
He had to be approved by going to the cross. Yes. Then when he got up out of the cross, then he was appointed. Mm -hmm. He was appointed yes. to what? To sit on the mercy seat. Mm -hmm. Then he was able to sit by his father. Amen. Amen. After he had wiped the blood on the mercy seat yes. and claimed that this is a complete and finished work. Yes. I love somebody. Yes. Amen. Yes. So he had to be what? Approved. Yes. When, 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 um, when he was brought before, um, not Pharaoh, Pilate. Potiphar, not Potiphar, Pilate. Pilate. Pilate, Pilate, okay, Pilate said, what I have and find no fault in this man, mm -hmm. because he was born without sin, but he still had to go <coughs> to the cross, that was the approval process, yes. twice, twice, the father said at his baptism, this is my son, whom I am what, what? Well, well pleased. pleased. At the Mount of Transfiguration, this is my son, whom I'm well pleased. Now what? Now hear him. So he always offered the fact that in his, in his journey of being approved, he was pleased. Amen? And let me tell you, God is pleased with you. Amen? He's pleased. Even in the midst of it, as long as you stay on the path, don't get off the path. Don't get out the car. Amen? Okay, before the sunshine comes. I think I told you a story about that. Yeah. I've seen people get out of the car and get mad with those who stayed in the car to sunshine. Yeah. And they're still in the mess. No husband, no wife, no money, no money, because they didn't stay rooted and grounded in the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which establishes yeah. us a son. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on. I'm just trying to set something up for you. Okay. This is tasty. Amen. This, this now, is tasty. let's go over to, let's go over to Romans. Yeah. <laughs> Romans 8, 14. Satisfy my sweet teeth. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> now, you it's imperative that you know who you are. Amen. Amen. According to the gospel. Yeah. It's imperative yeah. that you know who yes, you are. Yeah. Because the enemy will always try to tell you something yes, Lord. so that you will not know who you are to disqualify you. Yes, Amen. Yes, Amen. Amen. So that you will try to cancel. Your destiny. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love somebody. Amen. Because if you keep talking crazy, you're going to act crazy. Oh yes, yes, sir. And people are going to deem you crazy. Uh -huh. Hello? Uh -huh. And they want to be bothered with you. Now remember in South Philly, in the streets, and they would we were going to another neighborhood. And we said, man, what are we gonna do? Such and such and such, man, you got your razor. You got this, you got that, you got a stick or whatever. And one guy said, man, all you got to do is act like you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> act like you're crazy. You don't like crazy folks. Amen. All right. Well, the word says that any man that says there's no God, he's a fool. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love somebody. So watch out for those that say there's no God. All right. And what they're saying is they don't know who they are. Amen. Now, let's look over at uh, 14 of uh, Romans 8. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Yeah. Okay? Now follow this. If you're led by the Spirit, by the Word of God. Amen? Amen. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. Mm. The spirit of adoption. Okay? Mm -hmm. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So we adopted by him, amen, because we were once enemies to the promise, amen, even enemies to our own selves, set apart. But through the blood of Jesus Christ, God has made us a holy habitation and called us sons by the Spirit. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Okay, we're children of God. Everyone that is created, okay, is a creation. But unless you receive Jesus Christ, 
for the adoption and restoration and reconciliation, you're not a child of God. There's no covenant rights. Now, when you look at 15, it says the spirit of adoption. We cry, Abba, Father. Now, this adoption is very interesting because in most states, if you adopt a child, okay, in terms of your will and the child's inheritance, you can't remove them. A natural child, you can remove, mm -hmm. but not the adopted one. So because we are adopted, we cry out, Abba, Father, and God is obligated, okay, to break forth the promise. He said, I received the what? A command to bless, and I cannot reverse it. So it cannot be reversed. Amen? Amen. And if children, 17, children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be it that we suffer with him, that we be glorified together. Mm. For I reckon, that means it's a count, yeah, uh -huh. that the suffering of the present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed unto us. Who is that? The children of God. Yeah, yeah. So you know that whatever suffering is, right down the road, some kind of way, yeah. amen, that's been laid up before the foundation, yeah. the glory and yeah. the promises yeah. of God are being revealed, not to be revealed, but are yeah. being revealed. Yeah. Because you go from glory to glory, yeah. box to the box. Yeah. So the Lord says, stop trying to do it from the flesh because no flesh no, no, can stand in the no, presence no. of his glory. Yeah. First Corinthians 1.29. Amen. Yeah. Cannot do it. So it has to be through what? The spirit. Yeah. And this thing is spirit to spirit. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And I'm just going to show you something in how the church acts. Okay? okay. And remember that <laughs> Jesus said, my father's house uh -huh. is a house of prayer for all nations. Yeah. But you have made it what? A den yeah. of thieves. Okay? Yeah. He said, well, what's that mean? We're not selling chickens in the house. We're not um, we're not uh, uh, changing money in the house. We're not doing this. But God says, stop stealing the people's opportunity to repent, receive my mercy, receive my grace, my restoration and reconciliation. Stop stealing it with condemnation. Come on. And I'm talking to pastors, I'm talking to leaders. Stop stealing what goes on in the house of prayer because with prayer, things are changed because the power and the mercy of God. See, what, once we begin to pray, we get heaven involved because we have the keys to the kingdom of what? Of heaven. Enter. Come on, somebody. If we lose something on earth, it's loosed in heaven. If we bind on earth, it's bound in earth and heaven. So we have power of heaven and earth. But it has to be what? The loosing and the binding is the speaking of the word in love. I love somebody. And I was talking to a pastor. You just can't. You can do these things that the gospel says to people with correction and etc. But it has to be done out of spirit of love, yes. not in condemnation, yes. Yes. not out of the flesh. Yes. Hello, somebody? Yes. And the spirit of God is telling me, woe unto those who call good evil no, and man. evil good. No, woe Come unto on. you Come who on. are whitewashed on the outside. Yes. Amen. Yes. Come on. But uh, what? Like dead man's bones yes. on the inside. Right. He said, refrain from putting burdens on people's shoulders mm -hmm. and not be willing to lift yes. one yes. burden. Somebody ought to tell God thank you. Thank, thank you. One last scripture before we get into what and trying to set this up for you very clearly. Praise God. We're going to go to Philippians 1 verse 6. Being confident of this very thing. Being what? Confident. Amen? Confident. And the words that hold fast to your confidence because it has what? Recompense of what? Reward. Amen? <laughs> hold fast. That he with have begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now he has begun a good work in you when? When you got saved? 
From the beginning. From what? The before beginning. Before the foundation of the world. Before you was even in your mother's womb, he had begun this good work. Say neighbor. 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 You might not look like it. You, you might, might not look like, you like it. You might not sound like it. You, you might, might not sound, sound like, like, like it. There's a whole bunch of good in you. But it's a whole, a whole lot of good in you. And it's getting better. And, and it's getting better. On the by and by. On the by and by. Lord, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Let's go to, we're going to do, and we're working with this, how the Father wants everything to come together. Amen. The man of God was saying forgiveness. Forgiveness keeps things together. Yes. Okay? Yes. Unforgiveness separates. Yes. yes. Okay? Amen. Now, you can forgive somebody and don't want anything to do with them, and you shouldn't have anything to do with them, and that's cool. That's your comfort level. Mm -hmm. But make sure you have forgiven and work on this place of forgiveness mm -hmm. because we have been forgiven. Yeah. Amen. Okay. We've been given a what? Past, mm -hmm. present, mm -hmm. and future. Right. Amen. So that's the complete redemptive work. Mm -hmm. Because if there's something that we have not been forgiven of, then God would have to come back and send Jesus again. Mm -hmm. So God is not punishing us. More times we're punishing ourselves and punishing one another. Mm -hmm. But God is not punishing us. Don't get that confused with consequences. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Consequences are sequences of things that come together because of an action. Amen. All right? Amen. Amen. Amen? So let's look at this parable, and I want to show you something. Uh, three hearts. Three hearts, one God. Three hearts. Amen? Three hearts. Okay? And we know this very well, but I want to show you something. And 11. <clears throat> and he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to the father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me. And he divided unto them his living. Mm -hmm. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, he took his journey. Excuse me, sir. Where are you at? I'm sorry, Luke 15. Oh, you said Philippians. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I said Luke 15. Luke 15 and 11. I did say it. I thought it said Philippians 1. What did I say, Pastor Judy? Luke 15. Luke 15. Okay. Merci, Pastor. Okay. No, he didn't say it when he started reading, but he said it quietly. 15 11. And a certain man had how many sons? Two sons. And the younger of them said unto his father, Give me the portion of goods that fall to me. And he divided unto them his, what? Living. Amen? He divided unto them. Right? Mm -hmm. And he said, Not many days after the younger son gathered all together, he took a journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Amen? So he took something that he didn't know how to handle. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And he took it, and he desired to go somewhere, and the Lord is saying, don't just wander here where you're supposed to go. It's those that are went and those that are sent. Amen. Hello, somebody? Amen. 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 I waited until God sent me. Amen. I waited until God sent me. Amen. Because when you're sent, that means that the Holy Spirit has prepared a way. Yes. And if you would look at, if you don't have to do it now, but if you look at Isaiah 43, it says that John prepared the way for our God. Okay? John the Baptist yeah. prepared a way for our God. That means he, he made it possible as praise and worship and the suffering of prayer and the prevailing and the travailing of prayer makes teaching and preaching easy. And we look at things with such a very narrow perspective. All right. And that perspective is you might see a great revival going on and signs and wonders and miracles. They don't come in the day before. All right. Yeah. right. Okay. Hallelujah. They start that travailing and laboring in the spirit maybe for a year. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. They sanctify those grounds. Amen. They fast. They pray. Yes. They give. They yes. lay prostate before the Lord 
because there's preparation time. So this person decided, well, look, I think I just want to get my part, okay? I want to get a collar, amen? I want to get a staff. I want to get a staff, thank you. I want to get a staff, I want to get a big Bible, I want to get a cross, and I want to go out and I want to start a church. Mm. Hello? Okay, I want to start a church. So that's something that you want to do, but again, that's not something you are approved to do. All right. Hello? Amen. And many times, and I say to leaders, that we ordain and promote and elevate people because of their gift, not because of their humility mm. and their anointing and their relationship with God. Hello? Amen. Because they're sent too early. They're sent too early. And the church back in the day, before you could get to the pulpit, yes, you had to make sure everything was clean. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello? Amen. You had to make sure your pastor wanted for nothing. Yes, Hello? Amen. You had to mix up. Oh, what? Go clean your pastor's house. Clean the pastor's house. Oh, Who they think I am? Days. Okay? <laughs> you said, why would you clean the pastor's house? So that the pastor would have time for prayer and the word. That sound familiar? Yes. yes. For prayer and the word. <clears throat> okay? So you have to be separated from the carnal thing because the carnal mind is an enmity under God, not subject to the laws of God. Neither can it be. Because unless you're willing to serve, you cannot minister this gospel effectively to the souls of people who need to be served. Amen. Hello? Amen. So he wanted to take his living and he wanted, I mean, his money and go do what he wants to do. And that's most of the time 